Hi guys and welcome back, I'm Adam Thomas, thank you all so much for being here. In today's video we are going to strip back right to the start of Procreate. I'm going to go through all the basics, how to use stuff, where everything is on the menu, what everything does, which will get you all up to speed with a brand new series of Procreate from beginner to expert. All of this is going to be based on what I do and what I use as a tattoo artist. It will translate into loads of other areas. Primarily, I'm going to be focusing on how to use this from a tattooing point of view, but hopefully you guys will just find tons and tons of tips. Like the video if you enjoy the content, click the bell icon to get notified of all my latest updates. And with all that being said, let's jump into Procreate Basics Lesson 1. So first things first, you want to grab yourself your iPad, make sure you've got your Apple Pencil, it's going to make your life a lot easier than just using your finger. Uh, you want to download Procreate, you can find it from the App Store, uh, or if you're not using an iPad, I'm sure you can get it from uh, the Google Store or any any anywhere you normally get your apps from. Uh, so open up Procreate, the first screen you're going to come to is the gallery screen, this is where you're going to have all of your past projects. If you haven't used Procreate before, this will potentially be empty with maybe just a few uh, stock files uh, that Procreate put in there. Um, but this is where all your work is going to be saved uh, and stored so you can go back and work on stuff at a later date. In the top right hand corner, you can see that we've got a few icons. We've got Select, Import, Photo. Select is going to do exactly what it says on the tin. It's going to allow you to select any of the files if you want to do mass delete, if you want to stack, preview, share, and just give you a few little options in that sense. So stack or basically put them into a little folder, as you can see how that's grouped them together. So say you've got a designs folder or you've got uh, like client folders or folders just for roses or, or whatever. It's just going to allow you just to put those together uh, and just keep them all uh, in one place. Import, it's gonna import stuff into this. So if you've seen uh, how to import fonts into Procreate, uh, this is where I do that. Again, you can go back through the channel, you can find that video uh, photo. It's just gonna import a photo straight into the gallery. So instead of you um, opening up a file and selecting your file size, uh, you can just import that straight in and edit that straight into uh, in Procreate. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the plus icon in the top right hand corner. Uh, that's going to give us a new canvas option. Uh, so this is basically just going to give us uh, a new file to start drawing and, and creating stuff in Procreate. Uh, for me, if you've seen any of my other Procreate videos, I use A4. Uh, that's mainly because uh, as a tattoo artist, most body sizes are A4 and it gives me in my head an idea of the size that I'm designing on the canvas um, in the sense that I know how big a sheet of A4 is. So whatever I do on the iPad, once that gets printed out, it's pretty much gonna be the right size. Um, you can make custom canvases, which is the little little gray icon with the plus, but for me, I mainly just use A4, unless I'm doing anything specific, like YouTube thumbnails, um, Instagram reels, and stuff like that. Uh, so we'll just go click A4. That's gonna open us a brand new document. It all looks white at the moment, if you just pinch and close that down a little bit, that is our A4 sheet. Uh, so like I say, we know how big an A4 sheet is in real life, so based off this, whatever we do design-wise, we'll have a rough idea of what that's gonna be like once it gets printed out. We're just gonna go through all the icons, um, just so that as you watch my other videos uh, and I start sort of whipping through things quite quickly, uh, you'll be able to follow along quite easily and know exactly where we're going. Uh, so we're gonna start from the top left-hand corner. So gallery, if we tap that, that's literally just gonna take us back to the gallery. So if you wanna grab any images from other files or uh, just go back and start a new uh, a new file, that's how you get back to the gallery. So we'll click back onto uh, where we were. The next icon across, um, in my videos I refer to this as the spanner icon just because it makes sense with the little, the little picture up there. Uh, but we're gonna click that, that's the actions tab. So copy, paste, all, all stuff like that. So the first tab that we've got on there is add. Uh, so this is going to give us a few options, so it's going to give us insert file, uh, which is again fairly self-explanatory, it's just going to insert a file into the uh, into the canvas. Insert photo is one that we use a lot, uh, if you tap that, not your Apple Photos app, and that will allow you to import any photos that you've saved or downloaded. Take a photo, again, that's going to take a photo, if you've seen uh, my video on how to design a rose or the, the pound of flesh uh, video that I tattooed, uh, you'll see that I take a photo of that. Uh, and then we can design straight onto uh, onto that body part. Add text again, fairly self-explanatory. It's going to add text into the uh, into the canvas. And then we've got cut, copy, copy canvas, and paste. So they're just your standard copy, cut sort of things. So cut will cut an image out, but it'll also keep you keep it a copy, so you can then paste it. Copy will copy whatever you've got selected, uh, and then paste. Obviously, that paste that back in. 
So moving across, we've got canvas. Uh, this is gonna do, give you all the options directly for the canvas. So we've got crop and resize, so that's basically gonna change the size of the A4. So we won't need to touch that. Um, if you did want something smaller, like I say, you just start a new file size and you can create the canvas size straight from there. Uh, like I say, for like YouTube thumbnails and things like that. Uh, animation assist, we won't need that. We won't need page assist either. Um, I have used these before. Uh, this allows you to do like uh, almost like a cartoon, like a stop start animation. From my point of view and from like a tattoo design point of view, I won't need to touch those. Drawing guide can be really useful. Uh, that's gonna put a grid on there. Um, you can edit the drawing guide. Um, so you can change the opacity of the grid. You can change the thickness of the grid to make it easier or sort of more subtle in the background. Uh, you can change the grid size so you can have a really tight grid or really big grid. This is great if you're trying to do something very symmetrical. Uh, and obviously you can change this to isometric perspective uh, and symmetrical. Um, so if you're trying to do like mandalas and patterns and things like that, helps you out a lot there. Uh, assisted drawing, if you click that on, basically what it does is as you start drawing lines, they're gonna snap to the grid. Um, so if you're trying to do something like an isometric perspective drawing, like a one point or two point perspective, or if you're trying to say like do a mandala, it's gonna help you just to snap to those lines, keep everything really nice and tight. Uh, we'll go into that in a bit more depth uh, in a later video. So going back to the actions tab on canvas, moving down, um, we've got reference. I'll be honest, don't know what reference does. Um, we've got flip horizontal, which is just gonna flip the canvas horizontally and then vertically. Same sort of thing, and then canvas information just gives you the information about the canvas, so canvas size, all the information you put in there, so it'll give you the file size. If you click the share, that's gonna give you all the share options, so this is where I do my printing, um, or if you're trying to save a file out or get it onto a different device. I mainly use PDF, so PDF will just stop it from changing any sizes through printing, so you think they've changed it now with some of the updates, but it used to be a case of if you printed JPEG, It'd be a teeny tiny image on your A4 sheet and it'd be really, really frustrating. You'd end up having to save it out and print it through your printer's printing app. Whereas if you print straight from PDF, it will uh, retain the file size and it'll print everything A4. Everything will be perfect. The different file types uh, do different things, but we'll go into those in a later video. Uh, and then share layers. Uh, again, instead of sh sharing the whole canvas, it'll just share individual layers that you've got selected. Video. So Procreate will do time lapses. It will record everything you do on Procreate, so if you did want to do a time lapse from a blank canvas to a finished piece, it'll record every step of the way, everywhere you click, everything you do, which is great if you're trying to do a short tutorial on things you're doing on Procreate. Uh, for me, it doesn't really work because I tend to blabber on quite a lot and explain what I'm doing. Um, the time lapses tend to be quite fast, but play around with them, see if you like them. Uh, they are good. Preferences um, are literally preferences for the app. Uh, I don't change a lot of this because I've got it set how I want and it's pretty much how it comes to standard. Um, so light interface, that'll just change everything from black to light. Uh, for me in the morning, it's just a little bit too much. Uh, Right-handed interface basically just flips everything onto the other side. Dynamic brush scaling. I have no idea what that is. Uh, and then there's a few other little uh, little options down there, but they, for me, I don't see the need to change any of those. For me, everything works how it works. Um, and we don't need to worry about that too much. So go back up to the top, uh, the little magic wand button. If we tap that, that's our adjustments layer. So this is gonna give us any adjustments like brightness, contrast, sharpness uh, to individual layers. We use this a lot. Again, if you can see any of my previous tutorials and moving forward through this Procreate series, we're gonna be using this a lot. So uh, I'm not gonna go into it too much uh, detail wise, but in a nutshell, that's where you're gonna be able to adjust like, like say like your hue, your saturation, brightness, uh, your main things that you're gonna need to manipulate images to make them tattooable. And then like moving through blurring and sharpening, they're gonna help you out a lot uh, to make images clearer or give you that nice sort of like dynamic look. So moving across to the little, uh, the little S icon. So this is the select icon. So once you've got images on your canvas, it's gonna allow you to draw like marquees around them. So you can select certain areas. So you can delete, move and add and take away things. All of these things we're gonna dive into a little bit deeper in some later videos. But for this, this is just gonna be a, a very basic overview. So again, that's the select icon. So yeah, moving on to the arrow icon. Once you do have things selected or you've got layers available, at the moment we've just got a blank canvas, it's gonna allow you to manipulate those layers individually. It's gonna allow you to flip horizontally, it's gonna allow you to resize, uh, manipulate the shape, distort, or a lot of other tools. Again, we're gonna go into those in a lot more detail. Uh, this is just the basic overview. So moving over onto the right hand side, we've got your tools. 
So the first one we've got is your brush tool. So if we tap that, that's gonna give you all of your brushes in the brush library. Online, you can download hundreds of brushes. Basic ones that come in Procreate uh, are really good for you, every, your, your day-to-day -day sort of stuff. Uh, there's some incredible uh, companies out there that do um, amazing tattoo brushes uh, for like dot work and stippling and other effects that work with the tattoo process. For me, I use just a few brushes on a day-to-day -day basis, and they're gonna go into this top little section, which is recent. Uh, so technical pen, that's what I use to do all my stencils. I've got it set so the line weight is perfect for my printer. It means I can get a lot of detail in there. It's definitely gonna get picked up by my thermal copier uh, and it's not gonna be too overly cramped and just bleed out. Soft airbrush, I use that for erasing stuff. So it just gives me a nice soft sort of outside edge. Clouds, I use that for a lot of backgroundy stuff, just very simple, just to soften things out. Uh, and the other tools are just there uh, for when I need them. Moving over, I've got the smudge tool. I personally don't use a smudge tool a lot. It does have a place and a purpose with some sort of arty uh, design elements. For me and the stuff that I do with black and gray realism, it doesn't really sort of work for me. Uh, so we won't probably be using that a lot uh, throughout the tutorials. Moving on from that, we've got the eraser tool. Again, very similar to the brush tool, but instead of adding, it's gonna take away. So if we tap that again, it's gonna bring up the same brush library that we had before. So Recent is gonna have um, all the recent brushes that we used for erasing. Um, for me, like I say, I mainly just use soft airbrush, um, but there are a few other ones that I do tend to use. Um, like if I'm trying to get nice negative strips and stuff like that through pieces, um, I'll use a few different brushes, but generally speaking, it'll just be the soft airbrush that I use for my eraser. Uh, and that's just gonna take away uh, elements that are on that layer that you've got selected. The next one across, the two little squares, that's our layers tab. So this is where all of your layers that you import into the piece are gonna be. So if you've got any images, if you've, you're stacking up design elements, uh, they're all gonna be there. They work in a way, uh, if you imagine a stack of paper. So whatever's on the bottom, as in the bottom of the list, as it goes down, that's gonna be a bottom piece of paper and everything else is gonna stack above that. So if you keep that in mind, if you're adding, if you've say got a rose and you're adding leaves into it, you're gonna want those leaves on a lower layer so they sit behind the rose layer. Again, we'll go into that in a lot more detail and I do brush over this on my how to design tutorial. So if you go and check that out, uh, you'll be able to know exactly what I'm on about. The last one we've got is the color picker. There's a few different ways you can manipulate the color picker. This is how I have mine. So I have the full spectrum across the top plus the uh, manipulation tools uh, and then my history. I pretty much just use a few colors. So I use black and white for highlights and shadows if I'm manipulating pieces. Uh, and then for my stencils, I used to use green. I've now moved over to red. It doesn't really make a lot of difference. You just need a high contrast color, uh, which is why I've pretty much just got black, gray, white, and red. Obviously you have the full spectrum of colors if you're trying to create um, a completely custom art piece. Um, but for me, they're the colors that I use uh, and that's where the color picker is. Move over to the left hand side, uh, we've got like the brush sizing tools. Uh, so this top slider, this is gonna do the size of your brush. I'm currently on a technical pen, which I normally have at 5%. Again, we'll go into why I have it on 5% and everything else in a later video. But that's gonna do your size. Uh, the middle one is basically like an eyedropper tool. So if you've got layers on here, you can move the eyedropper around by clicking in the center. That'll pick up whatever color you land on, and then you can then use that color to then uh, to draw with. Uh, so that'll change the, the color in the color picker. Again, this will make more sense once we've got images in here, and I can uh, go through that a little bit more. Uh, the one underneath is just the opacity. So uh, if you are drawing or erasing, you can change the opacity from 100 to 0%, and that way you can take stuff away or add stuff in. Uh, and then the two underneath is undo and redo. So there you go guys, that is pretty much a quick run through of what all the buttons and everything do in Procreate. Like I say, I'm gonna go into them all in a lot more detail and a lot more depth. This is just a quick overview so you guys know where everything is, what I refer to when I'm saying go to this corner, go to that corner, click this icon, and it'll just help you to be able to just keep your head down, get stuff done on your iPad without having to keep pausing and stopping the video in later videos. Uh, like I say, we are going to go into a lot more detail into what these things do and we'll go into a lot more depth and uh, explain why I use certain icons and what, what I use them for. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content, click the bell icon to get notified when I upload all the next Procreate videos. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you on the next video. Peace.